day folks bit of a Sunday supplement today the plan is to put together all of these wire lampshades that I got off eBay they were only a pound each and you can definitely see why now they've arrived quite a lot of them have bits of wire missing or the wires loose or there's bits falling off or the screws missing or they don't fit onto the lamp holders that I've actually got for them so what I've done is I've gone through each one individually and we've got over 20 of them over there already drilled to tighten them up on the lamp holder so I've just popped an extra little hole in there so that when the lamp holder goes in it grabs the tightest part obviously it goes in that way you see what I mean? But what I have to do with the rest of these is reattach these fiddly bits of wire that have fallen off which I expect for a pound, come on I'm not going to complain too much uh, so I'm setting the welder up the TIG welder to spot weld essentially so uh, not something that I've done often so I've already done a few experiments with the TIG and uh, I figured out that about 70 amps is where we want to be with the foot pedal you don't have any ramp up or ramp down on the arc start and arc finish so we're going to go ahead and uh, pump some amperage into these bits of wire and see just how well they fuse Okay, so I've kind of got you focused in as best I can on this wire cage and if you just look here, this section here, you'll see there's a gap just beneath my finger and a wobbly bit of wire. So this is what we're going to remedy initially. So first things first, we will drop our mask and uh, try to close up this gap not having too much luck that was quite a powerful burst of uh, ampage let's try again got him so we've got it there I think we might want to just come down a little bit on the ampage again so 70 seems a bit heavy so I kept the ampage as it was and in the end I just ended up whacking the pedal several times until it actually started to stick together so she ain't pretty but she's definitely welded together so I'm not going to risk tidying that up anymore in case it pops undone so we've got another one here look so let's see if we can get that to fuse and if we can get that working then maybe we'll be a step closer to figuring these settings out and find an angle to come in maybe there oh yes I think we nailed it another one fused maybe just a touch more amperage and then only one tap on the pedal should do me
end up those two bits of timber that I fetched in to go on top of the uh, timber framing against that wall that I put in on Friday, you know, in the pub downstairs. And uh, then I've spent 15 minutes on the computer deciding what we're going to do for these chairs. And I think I'm going to punt for something just as simple as that. They're pretty good stools. I mean, easy to make. 25mm square tube, 2mm thick. It's relatively cheap. I think we'll be picking that up for about 11 or £12 a length. And about one length will do a chair, so it's about 12 quid a chair plus a piece of plywood for the top. I should get 20 plywood seats out of a sheet. A sheet of plywood is what, 25 quid? So I think we can make all of these for less than half the price it would have cost me to buy them ready made from Ikea. And they'll be nice and solid as well, which is a good thing. So I've put the order in for BM Steel to deliver me some box section, hopefully Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll crack on with them. But Gemma's arrived. It's perfect timing. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up, folks. Chuck the camera in the bag and go home. Oh, it's cold, folks. Right, I'm home. I just thought I'd do a little PS to the video because while I've been back here watching Gemma and Abby cook some bread, I'm looking forward to trying that with a bit of stew this evening. Um, I've been looking at some videos on YouTube. Obviously, you guys uh, have all thrown a few quid in the hat with the Patreon page. And on the 5th of the month, uh, that comes through to me. And I thought, what can I invest this Patreon money into um, to provide some more great content for the channel? And also give me a fantastic tool to help my life a little bit easier in the brewery. Once the pub's finished and set up, of course. And uh, I thought, you know what I could do with? something to track the data of fermenting beers uh, as we brew all different types of beer throughout the year and be able to put that in graph form and analyze the data and analyze uh, the repeatability of all the beers and of course there is a little bit of uh, equipment on the market which basically does that for you. It's called the tilt hydrometer. So I think I'm going to take a dive and pick one of those up. I believe they're doing them um, for about 130 quid in the UK at the minute. So it's a fair old chunk of, uh, of money, but I think it will pay for itself in terms of revenue generated from the content we can create from it. So just a little bit of a sneak peek. I'm going to sit in front of the computer and order that tonight. And then hopefully it'll be here at some point this week and we'll be able to uh, perhaps play with it in the next in the next brew. I'm not sure how to log the data though. I think what I'm going to do is get something like an old tablet, like an Amazon Fire with uh, Android on it. And maybe do what Rusty Homebrew did where he just stuck it to his fridge. I'll be probably sticking uh, a tablet to each fermenter. You can pick up Android tablets for 20, 30 quid these days, can't you? And then we use the Bluetooth to log the data off the tilt, and we use the Wi-Fi to send it to the Wi-Fi box in the brewery and upload it to the cloud. I can sit at home and check how my brew's doing. I think it'll be a good investment. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Tell me how you've rigged up your tilt hydrometer, if you've got one. And uh, any links to any other videos would be much appreciated, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.